Building a plastic model and getting great results, it's easier than you think. So I'm pretty sure you will want to know how to achieve this type of detailing for upgrading your modeling results to the next level. In this video, I will show you how to work with plastic parts for creating an accurate representation of your model. You will see how I make new details using common home materials, how you can create great accessories using super basic sculpting abilities. Hi everyone, this is Nautia Spencer and welcome to my hobby channel. For this building project, I will be using this Academy Panzer II in 135th scale. This is a very decent kit, far from the old details of the classic Tamiya 1. The spruce come very well detailed and it has minimum amount of flashes. Also it comes with a photo etched sheet and a wide variety of decals for choosing the ones you like more. I bought this kit as part of a group build from my scale modeling club, so thanks to this group I could get some very limited aftermarket spots. Later I will tell you about them. For extra detailing I bought for this occasion the frill model metal trucks designed for the Panzer II tab. The ones in the kit seem quite okay. But in my opinion, this type of small vehicles look better with finite trucks. So the building process begins as usual, and I like to complete first the running gear. I find super tedious all cleaning and sanding processes for the wheel pieces and suspension parts. So I like to finish these things first and move it later to more interesting subjects. I like to use Tamiya extra thin cement for all plastic parts. For example, in this case, the return roller's hole was too wide and didn't fit properly in position. So using some some small drops of CA glue really helped me to fit these parts in place in a quick way. Another tip, make sure the remaining wheels fit correctly too, but don't glue them yet. Later you will see why. It's very common to find kits with big gaps in the inner side of the fenders, but for this 135th scale it would be too visible. So I cut along a strip of styrene and glued it with some extra thin cement. When I build models I like to start gluing first the main parts, to make sure they fit correctly to avoid misalignments between pieces. In this kit the two main front armor plates don't fit very well. Even making some light pressure with my hands barely solves the problem. Checking some real photos of the vehicle, I decided to take some styrene again, measuring the size needed, and later cutting it carefully, I adapt a custom piece to its place. Finally, it's just a matter of removing the excess and sanding a bit the surface. Also, make sure you use cement enough for this task, so plastic pieces will melt each other, creating a new solid piece. Most of times, out-of-the-box kits are not as detailed as the real vehicles. In this case, all the main plates of the Panzer II have well seen which are poorly represented in the kit. This kind of details really pop when the model is painted, so using a sharp hobby blade I start carefully pressing the plate against the edges of the armor plates, making small cuts along all the edge. Size of effect depends on the model you're building, so for this specific one I have to control very well the small cuts. Later I give the wall seams some straight shape using some fine sand. And finally, just a quick application of extra thin cement will smooth the welding result. It's important to represent these type of effects in the first steps of the assembly. In this moment, you can work comfortably, and later, when adding the next pieces, representing the weld seams becomes even harder. In this particular model, the upper front armor plate deserves a dedicated chapter. This area contained a lot of small parts, but also some omitted details in the kit. Checking some references, I decide to increase its details, using some homemade materials for representing a more detailed wheel support. Just below of what is supposed to hold the spare wheel, I represented some hooks to settle the tow cable, bend it and glued in place with some CA, and they look really nice. Later, using some metal foil, and copying the measures from the original parts from the kit, I replicated the clamps for holding the wheel. When completed, I was so happy with the result that I decided to not use the spare wheel this time, so all these details could be seen much better. Now I will show you some samples of simple plastic parts detailing. This wooden block for the jack has no wooden texture at all, so using a hobby blade you can scrap the texture in the surface, just using the tip and some quick movements. Quick and easy, but super effective for my model. Now using some similar techniques, I improved the definition of the gun piece and machine gun, making them sharper, increasing their detailing. As I said before, front area deserves some special care, but here in the rear area there are also some interesting details to work with. 
I hollowed the exhaust pipe and textured the entire piece using some Tamiya putty diluted with some acetone and an old brush. From the entire photo etched parts, that is the only piece I could use for my model. The rest pieces were part of other different versions, sadly not mine. I just bent the piece in shape and later glued it with some CA. As I mentioned, the rear area has interesting features as this. Both fenders are kept in place thanks to some sturdy metal springs which lock them in their position. Have a look how simple they have been represented in this plastic part. So I will have to represent some better ones, using first an appropriate copper wire as a guide, and later using another with the correct diameter I quickly represented the metal spring. This technique becomes super useful for representing spiral shaped pieces. Check how they look once in place. There is no possible comparison between the homemade version and the plastic ones. Some of the most eye-catching details of scale models are the tools spread it around them. Most resin kits include these plastic clamps molding in the same piece, but for this project I find them out of scale. For extra detail in the tool clamps, I took this old sheet from Aber for representing the tool clamps. In my case, these are the most difficult photo etched parts that I have dealt with. In fact, when you manage to build them correctly, they are completely functional, which is something amazing for painting the tool separately. But in this case, I can barely put the three parts together, so I ended by glue them in place. So this solution looks like some clumsy option for these photo etched parts, but it works fine and when painted, you won't be able to distinguish it. Anyway, check the result and how detailed they look now. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that thanks to the group build, I could get super limited aftermarket pieces, and here they are. I could use some 3D printed parts specifically designed for this model. First, some lifting hooks nicely shaped, a shovel resin piece much sharper than the kids one, and finally the fire extinguisher piece and some small clamps for smaller tools, because the other ones were too wide for smallest pieces. I could make another separate video about how to assemble some metal trucks, but I decided to include them as another chapter of this video. These trucks come with all the separate links, so first you have to use a hobby drill for hollowing all the links, at least to make sure there is no remaining casting material inside of the link where the metal pin is supposed to be. In this particular case, as due to its shape, these track links were weaker than other references from this brand, so I had to be super careful when drilling. Later, after measuring and cutting the wire into small pieces, in my case I like to work with sections of 10 links each, so I keep counting easier. For this model, I needed 109 links for each side. When all the sections are put together and correctly measured, I use some CA for gluing the pin inside the link. And that's pretty much it. Now we have fully workable tracks completed and ready to be in place in the model. My tip for placing the tracks without excessive effort is not to put one of the side wheels in place until the tracks are fitted. Later I just place the remaining wheel and I'm good to go. I remember my first time fitting metal tracks with all the pieces already painted and let's say it was hard. <laughs> So right now, the model is completed and ready for painting, but wait a moment, what if we add some stowage to the model? In the beginning of the video, I talked about creating some accessories using our basic sculpting abilities. So let's take some millipod putty. When using two components epoxy putties, it's very important to use equal amounts of each material. When I cut some slices of putty, I ball up each material separately, later mix them together, until the resulting putty has an homogeneous appearance. Using some baby powder for modeling purposes, I flatten the putty. Now with a hobby blade, I make some cuts searching for a rectangular shape. I want to represent some folded canvas or blankets. Now in the model, it's just matter of adapting the putty into the surface, folding in halves and creating some wrinkles in the corners. Here, talc powder will help us for preventing the putty to get too sticky. Once I was happy with the canvas shape, I pressed on it some of the accessories I had prepared for the model, some water jerry cans and the spare wheel now allocated in the engine deck. Also I placed some more accessories here and there around the model, and you can see the result when everything is put together. I don't use to include the stowage to all my models, but when I do, the models become more realistic for my taste. 
So here is the final result once the assembly is completed. This is the proof that you don't need fancy aftermarket sets for building a nice model which stands out. In comparison with the ones out of the box, you only have to know what details have to be corrected and some tips to add that amount of detail your model deserves. In my case, this is the level of building that I'm more comfortable with, taking all the good advantages of the extra detailing, but without getting crazy with overcomplicated photo etched or resin parts. That's my opinion of course, and it's totally fine if you like super detailed kits enjoying long assemblies. So this is it for now. Next video will be about airbrush painting this model in desert camouflage. Sounds good, right? So if you like this video and want to know more about how to continue with your model and start painting it, click in this video because I'm pretty sure you will find super helpful content inside. So I hope you found this video useful or at least interesting. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.